room. Please sit. So this is the uh, agenda page from Data Tracker, and it's getting better and better and better. So um, we'll be actually using it as the starting page for what we'll be presenting to you. So if you're looking for the presentation, the etherpad, etc., we'll show you as we do it where the links are, so you can participate to what we are doing here. So the the all the material we'll be showing is on this button here. It's also available on the cool applications that you can download for from your um, preferred uh, store on the web. But this is really a cool place to get it. You get all the, uh, those two links here will give you all the documents we'll be talking about today in PDF forms, all the uh, workup documents and personal submissions. And last but not least, here on this button here, you will get the link to the Etherpad. Clicking it. So please participate to the Etherpad. This is where we are taking our minutes. This is also a very useful page if you did not get everything that was being said, if you want to reread later. Please just open this window. If you think that the minutes were not taken properly, in particular for what you just said, please go ahead and modify the text live on the Etherpad. That's a very, very useful tool for all of us in this room. And with this, since we are a few minutes past the hour, oh, I see that people are going on the left. I would strongly encourage you to try sitting on the right, not using right. my right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always right. <laughs> so, so, so please pick that one, because you'll see better. And then when you come to the mic, and we, if we ask to raise hands, we don't see people on the other side here. We've been uh, suffering from, from this on, on previous meetings. OK, and with this, let us start with the agenda bashing and all the nice things that we are used to doing. So this is the uh, LP1 working group, co-chairs, Alexander and myself. And we've got a brand new Notwell at this IETF. So if you're not used to the uh, Notwell, if you've not read the previous RFCs, which uh, provide the policies for the IETF, this is a nice occasion to go ahead and read them because they are brand new and shining. Um, basically, what this will be telling you is that if you're aware of IPR on anything that's being discussed uh, on in this meeting, since this is part of the ITF activity, you are supposed to disclose this IPR, whether it's your IPR or somebody else's IPR. And if you don't want to disclose it during this meeting on the mic, then you can always talk to the chairs later or send us an email. This is an IETF meeting. Minutes will be taken, hopefully, by many, many people using the fine Etherpad link that I just showed you. Uh, the meeting is, is propagated on uh, Mitico. You can join the Mitico from this room or from anywhere else. And I'm giving again the pointer to the uh, Etherpad. We'll be distributing the blue sheets in a few minutes. We are used to seeing people come late. And I don't see that today is an exception to the rule. So um, we, we just delay, the, so, so we don't have multiple ways of blue sheets. We, yes, it's just the next. So uh, we are looking for uh, minute takers. So do we have volunteers? I see Dominique. Evalio. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Do we have somebody for uh, Jabber, Mitico, Diego? So fine. OK, so we are just doing great. Um, so I just showed you where I'm picking the, uh, the meeting material live, so I'll be going uh, back to that page, and that's a cool place to get it. So here's our agenda. We have two pages agenda. It's quite full, but we, are, we should be okay. Um, so we'll be, um, Dominique will be presenting us the uh, news from the hackathon, so there are incredible stuff which were done at the hackathon, and we are glad to, to show that. Um, then we'll talk about the results of the workgroup last call uh, on the overview document, and Stephen is there with us to present this. Um, then there is um, two set of slides for uh, one, or actually two documents, but the set of slides don't, don't really match documents. So um, we'll be talking about the static data compression document, which has a fragmentation part, and that will be uh, presented to us by Carlos. And then Anna and Laurent will be talking about uh, the, the chic compression. 
And that chic compression actually spreads two documents right now, the, the, the chic for IPv6 and UDP, and then the, the co-op piece. And maybe we'll discuss at some point uh, if we need to reorganize that a little bit because the, co the co-op document has, has grown smaller and smaller. And then Diego will introduce to us a new work, which is extending the chic to ICMP. We'll have a little bit of time for uh, Yang for chic and Laurent will be showing that to us. And then we'll have quite some time to discuss the, um, the, the Richard train. We, we, we left the last five, 10 minutes for news from IEEE by Bob. Bob, if you can hear us. So uh, I was at the IEEE last week as well. There are two interesting pieces, that two pieces which are of direct, direct interest for us. There is the IGLP1, which basically met every day last week. And there is the 154K uh, effort, which is also uh, an IEEE designed uh, P1 technology. And so I hope Bob focuses on those, but he will give us news from the IEEE. I would strongly encourage, and I see that Juan Carlos is with us, uh, to, 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 to extend this idea of giving us, giving us like a short news from the world about things which are happening in other body like LTN. So if you could think in further meeting to come and present like two, three, five minutes on what's, what has been happening in the last quarter uh, in LTN, uh, LoRa One, or uh, NBI OT, any of those, uh, a small slot would be, would be very good so that we get news from the world. So this time it's going to be IEEE. And with that, I'll fly to the airport because I'll be right. Um, you want to start there? Yeah, sure. So this is a short uh, refresher of uh, our charter and our milestones. So we were formed in uh, almost uh, less than a year ago with two main charter items. Uh, so we have the baseline technology description and overview document, and we'll be talking about this uh, uh, in the beginning of this meeting, and then the uh, technology drafts, the, and then the, the, the drafts that are actually dealing with the compression and the fragmentation. Uh, so, uh, in our compared to our milestones, so we have uh, most of them are uh, we we got them on time. We are with slight delay on the others, so the LP1 overview document and the compression and fragmentation mechanism, but we are pretty pretty well on them. And um, right now you'll see why. So we had from the start a very um, ambitious, challenging, a very challenging. Um, uh, Charter and uh, basically, uh, you know, we have to deliver everything in in less than a year. We're actually pretty happy with the with the development of uh, and with our advancement. So we had a design team that met and that really accelerated the things. And before the the last IETF, everything. Most, most of the stuff were cleared out, and since then, all the work has been happening on the mailing list, and, uh, and it's very, very open. So here is the, the deadlines that, uh, that, that we had initially. Uh, so with the overview document uh, uh, ready by April, then the SHIC for IPUDP by May, and co-op by June. Uh, so I would like to have a special thanks to the, to the whole to the, to the group and to everyone that has participated because we had a very, very, very active work during uh, the past uh, three months. So we had six interim uh, meetings uh, and uh, I would really like to thank everyone. So uh, people did marvelous, marvelous work. So we had actually, we could advance really, really rapidly. There are a lot of, a lot of th uh, things that were done. So the LP1 overview document, we started a working group last call in, um, in June. And uh, since then, there were a couple of minor commands uh, where they have been addressed. And we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll have the presentation from, uh, uh, from Stephen that will give, you, uh, that will give us uh, uh, the, the, the results of, of this. And we will be closing the, the, the last call very, very soon. Uh, the SHIC IPUDP. Uh, document is advancing really, really well. And uh, in the very, very near future, we'll go for We've, we think that we'll, we'll go for uh, last call, working with last call, and uh, I hope to have more news from, from Carles and from uh, Anna on, on this point. So that's uh, where we are with, uh, with uh, our charter and uh, with our action points. And I'd like to give you uh, just one minute uh, uh, overview of a report of an, a meeting that happened yesterday that's called the Yang of Things. 
Uh, and this meeting actually is the place where the constrained world meets the management world. So uh, it was uh, we had it was a side meeting. The, the room was full, a lot of interesting discussions. And the takeaway for this is actually that uh, for the next ITF we'll have uh, working implementation and we'll have uh, uh, all that is necessary for the Comi protocol. And uh, as you know, the Comi protocol is the one that we'll be using for, that we'll be using for uh, that may, we may be using for uh, configuring the compression contexts. So that's a thing that will come. Right now we have the uh, we are, we have the compression mechanism, but we need a way to co to configure the contexts. So uh, it is a work to to look for, and uh, I think it will be uh, that we are uh, right on time and we have all that is necessary. So with this, uh, Pascal, we we can we should. Sh so with this, we'll uh, move to the first uh, presentation uh, for this meeting. And our first presentation is the LP1 overview. So let's see where we are with the LP1 overview. So um, we're done. We have uh, completed last call on July 4. We're done for this working group, not for the eight years. But uh, <laughs> we've, we've complete, uh, completed the working group last call on the 4th of July. So the document is now officially independent. And uh, Alexander Peloff here will be the shepherd. And we'll, uh, we'll, we are now fixing the, the, the review commands, and uh, the document for I know is pretty much ready, minus a typo or two, but we, we are there. So we'll, we'll do the, the Shepard write up and, and ship this document uh, real soon now. That's where we are. And so, Stephen, if you will. Oh, there was the Akathon. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it's Dominic first in the agenda. So, Dominic, if you, if you, if you will. Uh, while, like, Dominic is coming up, like, I just, uh, can you just submit a update to the milestone so I can approve them? So, just to okay. keep yeah. the times update. Yeah, yeah thanks. That, that was actually a question. We'd like to have the milestones uh, up to date. So, we'll sorry. submit. Uh, Suresh. Okay, so before actually discussing the open overview document, we have, uh, so there was a hackathon that was organized, and Dominic is uh, kind enough to, to present us all the things that, that were achieved. Okay, good morning. Uh, so at the hackathon just before this uh, IETF week, uh, we had um, an activity on Shake, and it was actually two activities going on. One was a, an interop testing between various implementations, and the other one was actual hacking, improving what we already had. So the companies uh, or entities represented are listed here. Next, uh, okay, I can do it myself, apparently, yes. Uh, so before the hackathon, uh, the teams that came uh, had the following assets. Uh, EMT Atlantic, previously known as uh, Telecom Bretagne in France, had an uh, end-device implementation of Chic in Python and a network side implementation in JavaScript uh, and rules set up for LoRa uh, transmission. Uh, Aclio came with uh, an end device and network implementation in Go uh, on LoRaWAN and Sigfox. And myself uh, from Orange, I came with a LoRa device, legacy device that knew nothing about IP, uh, but was able to transmit frames on LoRa. Uh, the interrupt uh, mostly happened on Saturday and um, then had the EMT Atlantic and Aclio face uh, each other with their opposite implementations and device versus network uh, in both sites. Uh, and the results will be shown at the last yeah. slide. And so that was the intro part of it. And then the hacking part of that was uh, EMT Atlantic adding uh, the rules uh, and, and testing on Sigfox network on their own uh, end device and network implementation. And myself uh, ripping some Python code from EMT Atlantic end device side, put it on the network side, 
and do uh, write a, a quick decompressor that would be able to invent uh, co-op UDP IPv6 uh, uh, messages based on legacy uh, frames being transmitted by my LoRaWAN device. Um, and so the the lessons learned from this uh, hackathon. So we have shown that um, we have multiple technologies interoperating. Um, we discussed and clarified how we want to do padding, because uh, the when the header is compressed, it's not it does not necessarily fall on a byte boundary. So there's padding that's involved in on technologies that are byte oriented. And so you could have padding between the compressed header and the data, or padding after concatenating the compressed header and data. And in some cases, you would have two paddings. And so the decision was made to put padding at the very end. Um, also, we agreed on a temporary representation for rules. Uh, because uh, the rules had to has have to be agreed on between the two parties, and so right now we use a JSON representation that is not meant to become the standard, but at least for the interop we had to agree on something. Um, so that was agreed. Um, one uh, issue that was discovered is how to manage the uh, variable fields uh, that happen to have zero length. And co-op, as in a content, has an interpretation of zero length as representing a zero value. And uh, Sheik wanted uh, wants to be able to apply zero length fields to non-existent fields, so that we can reuse the same rule number for frames which have uh, some fields present and some non present. So here we have. Uh, we had discussion on how to interpret that, and uh, one has to agree on how this works on co-op, especially because of this zero length interpretation in co-op for contents. And eventually, uh, EMT Atlantic provides its, its uh, implementation open source on GitHub. So this can be used as a reference point for any anybody wanting to implement that. And I think I'm done. Oh, that's that's fantastic, uh, Dominique. Uh, I have a question for the authors. So, so you raised a number of points. Uh, I think for each of these points, we should open a ticket because we've got a workgroup document. So I can help opening uh, the tickets if you send me an email with, with the prime statement of, uh, and th this should be individual threads on the mailing list. Um, then we resolve this thread and I'm pretty sure that we are ready for last call. So, so let's open the tickets if you don't mind, send me an email and, and let's start from there. The issue on the, Laurent Toutain, the issue on zero length is just for co-op. So for IPv6 UDP, there is no problem. Yes. So part of the discussion today will be if we if we merge the co-op document or not, and depending on that. Well, unless, unless the solution for co-op makes it makes it so that we have to change the IP UDP, right? So so I, I would like to see this sorted. Any question in the room? Okay. So two implementations, one open source, that's a dream. Okay, thank you. So right now we actually move to the LP1 overview from Steven. So let's bring up the agenda. So that's good timing, so I just posted 06. Oh, oh. Okay. Like about, about two minutes ago. Okay, that's fantastic. So uh, it happens that we have uploaded your slides, but they are not yet on the website, so I will have to take them from my desk. But don't worry, they, they, they are on the ITF site. You'll be able to see them very, very, very quickly. Yeah, so I got, I got some uh, updated XML, um, minor editorial changes, basically, from Charlie Perkins at 2.30 a.m. and at 7 a.m. <laughs> I read it at 6, confirmed I was happy with them at 6.30. <laughs> so that's how we are. Sometimes, so I, sometimes I'm out of bed at 2.30, but not at 7. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, yeah, that's what I said. OK, so there's not much to say here, but uh, there we go. Next. Well, oh, you don't have to do. OK, next. Oh, OK, I have it, yeah. OK, so. Um, <laughs> 
So between four and five, there was just basically minor um, text tweaks, mostly, um, yeah, it was just minor editorials. But from about five to about six, it had, um, I got the text from Charlie, um, which posted 06 there like a couple of minutes ago. Have a look at the diffs, I guess. Um, there was also a bit of additional text about Sigfox that I added in with uh, when, um, when Carlos today, or well, not when we do, a couple of days ago. Um, and I, there was a minor tweak about the Laura text. But otherwise, it should be said. I think that we may still be waiting on some references from Charlie's mail um, in his new text. So I'd say we have a look at it for a couple of days. Maybe we'll add a new version with a couple of references, but basically that's it. So next slide. Oh, yeah, I have a chance. <laughs> Previous slides, sir? Uh, <laughs> am I kidding? Uh, so basically, yeah. So we have now have a zero six. So I give it a few days to sanity check it. And I guess when the, the shepherd's doing the shepherd write up, that'll happen anyway. Um, there's no other changes. I think just declare victory and shoot it off. So unless somebody has a thing to say, seems like that. Perfect, Stephen. Thank you so much. I mean, everybody, and, and special, special but, thanks for Charlie for for the the extra effort uh, of, uh, to, to make to make our dates. And so yes, uh, Alex is the shepherd. He will be writing the shepherd uh, write up very very soon. And and uh, Suresh will be pushing this to the ASG. And with this next step in our agenda is the fragmentation. So. Yeah. Carlos, if you can please show up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to present the fragmentation part of the cheek document. So first of all, uh, let's take a look at the status of the document. So since Chicago, the, the draft was updated several times. Revisions have been 03, 04, and 05. And specifically on the fragmentation part, we received two detailed reviews, one by Diego on version 03, and another one by Dominic on version 05. So thanks to both for the very helpful reviews. And also there's been a lot of discussion and input received on uh, in working group in dreams on the list or also offline. So thanks to everyone who has uh, made comments and helpful contributions. So uh, on the current status, the last uh, revision published is 05. Although there are uh, a number of updates uh, already prepared, which are uh, ready uh, on GitHub in the uh, working version of the document, uh, those updates uh, have been prompted by uh, Dominique's uh, review. And uh, we could say that overall fragmentation is fairly stable. So uh, let's have a quick summary of the main updates actually since Chicago. The version presented there was 02. So first of all, we have that uh, packet mode uh, has been removed from the document. We found that there were a few things that were not uh, well supported, a few issues there. And actually, there were some solutions proposed. So uh, we can still continue working in packet mode, however, that should happen on a different document. So as a result, in this current document, what we have is uh, three fragment delivery reliability options. The first is uh, NOAC, second is window mode ACK on error, and the third one is window mode ACK always. Then we have also added uh, the possibility to support uh, multiple window sizes. So uh, imagine that, for example, a node needs to transmit a very large IPv6 datagram, which requires a large number of fragments to be carried. Then uh, one option is to use a large window size in order to minimize as much as possible the acknowledgement overhead. However, maybe the same node may need to sometimes send a smaller packet that maybe just requires a few say two or three fragments to be carried. So in that case, it may be good to have, uh, to use in that case, a smaller window size, because then that leads to uh, using a smaller bitmap. So this kind of optimization is now possible by means of having a special rule ID for each specific window size that's being used. Uh, 
Then we have also added uh, the concept of a highest CFN in the window that can be lower than 2 to the n minus 2. This is equivalent to having a maximum window size uh, which can be lower than 2 to the n minus 1. Recall that n is the size of the CFN expressed in, in bits, as you can see in the uh, fragmentation header which is shown on the slide. And uh, this is uh, useful, especially in scenarios where uh, there may be constraints on the available space for the bitmap. Uh, so the idea here is to be able to tailor, uh, well, to exploit the bitmap space as much as possible and tailor the window size uh, to that available bitmap space. So for example, imagine there are only 24 bits for the bitmap, then we can use uh, a window size of 24 fragments. That would mean uh, high CFN would be 23, N would be set to five, and sender and receiver would be aware of this, so there would not be issues. So this is optimized compared with the previous approaches of the document where, if you remember, we didn't have this flexibility. So uh, the best option in terms of low overhead in the past would have been to set N to four, have a maximum window size of 15. So there would be one acknowledgement every 15 fragments. So now we have this additional flexibility and we can have one acknowledgement every 24 fragments. Okay, uh, then we have also added two fragmentation uh, header fields. One is the W bit. This is uh, a one bit field which uh, carries the same value for all fragments that correspond to the same window. Uh, this is necessary to avoid ambiguity at the receiver side because uh, losses can happen. So there might be situations where the receiver might not know clearly whether a fragment corresponds to the current window or maybe the previous one. And also for the same reasons, the W bit has to also be included in the acknowledgement. Uh, same reasons, but uh, in the other direction. And on the other hand, uh, the second field is the datagram tag, uh, in short, D tag which uh, is actually optional. And if present, it carries the same value uh, for all fragments that correspond to the same IPv6 datagram. So uh, the purpose here is to allow uh, interleaving uh, fragmented IPv6 datagram transmissions. And um, if used, then the DTAC field is also, uh, has to be also included in acknowledgements so that the fragment sender knows what is being acknowledged to which datagram uh, the acknowledgement corresponds. We have also added uh, timers. So in window mode Aconera, uh, we have uh, the timer called, well, the Aconera timer, which is started, uh, it runs on the receiver side. It started when the receiver uh, gets the first fragment of an IPv6 datagram. And then it is reset every time that the new fragment is received on the receiver and uh, if the timer expires, then it means that at least the last fragment of the window has been lost. So recall that in Aconero we have NAC-oriented behavior. So then the receiver would send an acknowledgement to report what has been received and not received. And the timer would be reset and restarted. And the receiver would wait for fragment retries. So in ACK always, in window mode ACK always, we have the ACK always timer where the fragment sender after transmitting the last fragment of a window, we'll start this timer. And upon expiration of the timer, if uh, the acknowledgement from the receiver hasn't been uh, received by the fragment sender, then uh, the sender will, uh, will send again the last fragment that had been sent and will restart again the uh, timer. So we also have uh, some parameters that control which is the maximum number of uh, retransmission rounds that there will be. So in Aconero, there's uh, one parameter which determines the maximum number of acknowledgements per window that a fragment receiver is going to, to send. Uh, this is the first parameter, as you can see. Then in ACK always, uh, there are two parameters. The first one is max ACK requests. The idea here is uh, that this is the maximum number of times that uh, a request for a specific acknowledgement will be sent by a fragment sender. And there is max frag retries, which determines the maximum number of uh, retransmissions for fragments that are reported to be lost in an acknowledgement. Uh, in addition, we have added uh, 
the abort message, which is a special message, which can be sent by a fragment sender or a fragment receiver uh, in order to uh, abort all ongoing fragmented IPv6 datagram transmissions. And this special message has also some uh, corresponding special rule ID to signal it. And finally, uh, we have added a, a, sp a particular section on downlink fragment transmission. So uh, this is motivated by the fact that in some <clears throat> layer two technologies, uh, sending a downlink data unit is only possible right after a previous uplink transmission. So if we want to send a downlink fragmented IPv6 datagram, then uh, the receiver of the fragments may want to send an uplink message right after a downlink fragment is received in order to uh, avoid potentially large uh, transmission delays. So uh, then, uh, as I explained, the last version published is 05. However, there are a number of proposed updates already prepared on GitHub. And uh, there are actually a number of updates. However, some of them are rather minor. So this is a summary of the main ones, possibly. So let's go through them. First one is important for terminology. Uh, we were using the term uh, CFN, compressed fragment number. However, uh, Dominic pointed out that this might be a little bit ambiguous because maybe uh, a reader could, uh, it couldn't be clear maybe for a reader whether what is compressed is the number or the fragment. So just to avoid this possible ambiguity, uh, Dominic suggested to modify the term. So the proposed update is fragment compressed number. So unless there are objections, this would be like the new term used, the new acronym. Then um, the highest FCN in the window is actually a constant. So this was not so apparent in the previous version of the document. So now in the proposed updates, this will be more explicit. And also there will be a notation, a specific notation for this, which is proposed to be max win FCN. And also uh, there is now an assumption that uh, would be made more explicit also. This is for window mode Acon error, and it relates with the sender behavior. So the idea here would be to explicitly explain that uh, an assumption is that the, the wait time for an acknowledgement in Acon error uh, has to be actually smaller than the time required to transmit a complete window. So a sender would uh, expect to receive an acknowledgement before the transmission of the next window of fragments. Uh, otherwise, the, there would be problems with the behavior of the protocol. And this is something that needs to be carefully considered, especially taking into account the latency characteristics uh, of the underlying layer two technology, among others. And Finally, there's uh, from the discussion with uh, Dominique, there is actually one outstanding question. Uh, he was suggesting that uh, maybe we might want to define the use of max frag retries, this parameter, which is currently only defined for ACK always. The idea would be to consider whether this might be useful in ACK on error also. So the reason why this is currently not yet uh, considered in ACK on error is that a fragment receiver will send an acknowledgement. By doing that, it will consume some resources, which may be expensive, and that is done with the expectation that then there will be fragment retries in response. Um, however, Dominic pointed out that uh, maybe this could also be used uh, as an attack. So for example, uh, it might be possible to send uh, this kind of uh, act to some device and make it believe that it has to resend some fragments. And uh, this might be a way to maybe deplete the battery of the attack device. So then uh, there might be different options on how to proceed with this. So uh, there are these three questions, A, B, and C here. So first is, OK, should we then define use of max frag retries also in Acon error? Then, uh, OK, if we define it for Acon error should we explicitly say that maybe we should allow up to an infinite number of retries and maybe defer to future Shikovafu documents what has to be done here? Or is this something that should rather be handled 
at an implementation level and not really be explicitly specified here. So what do you think? So Pascal Tuber, individual contributor here. Um, I, I would certainly want to see this discussion on the mailing list. Uh, I would like to see tickets from now on for, for things like that because we are near a completion and we need to track those things. And again, as an individual contributor, I don't, I don't think it hurts to have the variable and, and recommend it to be one. Um, I certainly want to see this discussion in the security section. So saying, oh, there is an attack vector here, here is how it's mitigated, we recommend value one for that reason, etc. Okay, thank you. Well, actually, that's everything for this presentation. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, Charaton, fantastic work. Sorry? Uh, Charaton, excellent work. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Yes, so um, yeah, just maybe a, a question for uh, for uh, to the group. Uh, so who has uh, read and reviewed some part of the fragmentation uh, section of this document in any version? So quite a few people there. And uh, so the 06 version will be coming out uh, soon, or you already published it? No. On the, on the mic. Okay, this is Anna Minaburo. Then for version six, uh, we are waiting to finish the modification in chic part of Dominique. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are done for the document. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so that's it. And okay, so has any? Uh, maybe this is the final question. Has anyone started actually implementing the full, uh, the full chic uh, documents? So we know that there are the compression part that have been already shown for the moment, and now with this updated version of the fragmentation, uh, who has already started actually implementing this? So, there's. There are two implementations there, Diego and uh, Diego Antivilo. So uh, this is one of the things that I would really like to see before uh, we actually go into, uh, you know, declare victory, is to have some, uh, at least, you know, some first version of, of, of code running so that we are sure that, you know, we, we've, because f by, by looking at the document and all the work in, in, in the presentation, for me, it seems that, We've solved all the big issues that are out there. There may be some minor things to fix, but the thing is working. And I just want to see that there is like, okay, code-wise, it's also good. And then it's, I'm pretty happy with the result. So, yes, um, it's it's having one implementation is is often quite good <laughs> uh, because it's just the first level of of star track documents. Having uh, like on three with law and, mm -hmm. and so so three of them one of them open source i think we are in a great shape uh, on that regard so. and with this i will ask laurent or Hannah, i don't know how you distributed the roles so um like i said earlier that the presentations don't exactly match the the documents because uh the fragmentation is actually in the same document as the ip udp compression which is most of the work for the compression and then the co-op piece is a separate document but this slide where kind of covers the the compression whether it's ip or co-op uh, whether the documents as their structure makes sense or if you want to ship that differently is still an open question but that, that the, pre the presentation at least don't match exactly the, the the documents so be prepared to see something from Co-op compression as well as UDP. Okay, hello, I'm Anna Minaburo. I will present the update of the chic compression part of the chic IP and UDP draft. Um, I want to thank uh, Diego and Juan Carlos uh, over reviews that have already updated in the document in version 5. We are working with Dominic for his uh, updates and modifications. So thank you also. 
Uh, one of the most important things between Chicago version 3 and today version 5 is the, that we define a generic framework. Then we work uh, a lot of things. We take out things of the co-op draft to the chic draft in order to create a chic compression framework. Uh, then we also um, generate and take out from the version 3. We were explaining how to compress IP UDP uh, headers in the middle of the framework. Then we take it out and we create a new section. Um, we also enhance a little bit the description of the processing of how to, how to make the compression. Uh, another, what this is in the general stuff, uh, how we can, we, we order the work in more technical things. We, we add uh, in the match mapping uh, compression decompression action. Uh, normally it was defined as a list. Then uh, uh, what, as soon as we see in the implementation, we also accept uh, to be an array. We have a very big uh, discussion of padding, as Dominique mentioned. Um, well, uh, be before Hackathon, we didn't know if we put it padding between the header, compress, and the data, or we put padding, padding at the end of the of the all the packet. So, as Dominique said, uh, the discussion result is that padding will be at the end, then after data. Uh, we we add a security section for the chic compression, and then more explicit uh, things that have been changed. Um, we have to add or copy the architecture part of the overview draft in order to make the reference, not to the informational document. So we add, we, it's a copy paste of the architecture have, that had been already defined in the overview draft. Uh, as you can see, uh, some modification is instead of uh, naming the host or things like things, we put it as device. Uh, we don't make an acronym, we only uh, reduce the name device as dev because this device could be many things. Uh, we also changed the name of the network gateway. Uh, we add a W to make gateway uh, in order to be more understandable. And uh, in the application server, we didn't put application as an acronym. We do it also as a reduction of name because it could be a server or an application or then we leave it as a more open. Uh, what else we add? In other words, we join the co-op part with the IP UDP. We, we need to add new fields in the rule. So we, we add the file ID, and then it's a new column in the rule in order to name the, all the fields of the header. Uh, we add the position and the direction indicators. And we change the name of the compressor decompression function as compressor decompression action. So with this, we, we, we have the same uh, description of the rule for any, any uh, protocol. Another thing that has been discussed is for the LSB and the MSB, uh, MSB matching operator or LSB compression decompression action how to send the length of the value. So the thing is that um, for co-op, a co-op define a maximum number of 1,024 bytes. So we need to have very large numbers, but we give importance to the very little number. Uh, that's why we put four bits for the little, for the little numbers, zero to 14. And we have to uh, define large number, but we don't think we are going to use them in CHIC or in LP1. So the question as Dominic uh, put it, in this, uh, it was, what about the uh, uh, value zero? Value zero, normally you don't send it. But uh, because for, for example, in co-op, in your iPad on your query, it doesn't exist. Zero is that it doesn't exist. 
But when you have an acceptor content, zero is value zero, then you have a zero. So um, in order to go forward with the chic compressor draft, we think that this must be specified in the co-op draft. Uh, at least uh, that's a question. Do you agree with this, or do you want that this specification will be done in the sheet compression? <clears throat> Pascal here. Um, my, my feeling is that we'll still discover stuff we need to do in addition to this document. So either we hold this document forever, which is a bad idea, or we, we stop somewhere in, in what we describe generically and we still need to keep some room for new ways in the mm -hmm. forthcoming documents. Meaning that, in my view, it's if in order to ship this document, and it's clean, right, so why not ship yeah. it? We, we need to be open that the forthcoming document will define additional stuff, including this. So I'm perfectly happy to see it move push to go up. Personally. Okay. Moment. There are about a million ways of doing a variable length field. Um, I'd love to have at least some rough idea of uh, why this one or three or seven byte thing, uh, one or three or seven nibble thing, mm. is the, the thing that, that actually makes sense. Um, so at least a little bit of thinking about probabilities of, of uh, certain values and so on uh, may be useful. Um, the other observation is uh, if your uh, code space includes length values as well as the absence of the field, uh, then just use one of the values for the absence of the field. So you could use zero for the absence, one for length zero, two for length one, um, and so on. So th th that need not be a problem. Um, of course, you need to define how this mapping works, but uh, that is indeed specific to, for instance, Core. Okay. Can we have a ticket on this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one rem around to town. One remark about uh, um, the length is that, in fact, when we put a zero length for array path, is because we can have a rule that contains, for example three description of the array path, but you receive a packet with only two array paths. So in that case, we can have a kind of negative compression. It means that we send four bits equal to zero to say that the first array path doesn't exist. So is is to really uh, to have more flexibility on rule selections. So it's not sending something that doesn't exist, but it say in the rule we have three places and only two are used. So that's why we will send this uh, zero length. And the other remark is about uh, documents. So the first document describes a way to send this, the thing on the radio, and then we have to interpret this thing. So in co-op, we have to specify that if you receive something in zero length when it's uh, accept or uh, content, it means it's value zero. And if you receive it, for uh, uh, URE path or URE crease means that it doesn't exist. But uh, in terms of, since the semantics are different, isn't it a different rule or something? I mean, should not the, the action say uh, this value means present, not present, and for a different action, it means the, the what you read in there is the actual value, like a zero. So I'm really troubled that, that you have a confusion of semantics uh, when, when you have a, a uh, action that can tell you what the semantics are. No, no, we don't have because it's different from it's different behavior from the nature of the, the option. Yes, that's what the action is. Yes, yes. but so, so if why you is look more carefully at the option, we have no ambiguity. If we just say option, then we they may have a big ambiguity. But if we say your path or content, it will there is no ambiguity. Uh, so th this uh, this other question. So here, what you are talking about is some very advanced compression in co-op and stuff like this. So it's like it's something very, we think could, or you think could be nice to have. So we don't know if this is going to be used. Uh, it, probably, yeah. yeah. So uh, what I suggest is that we don't block the document on this, like uh, trying to solve some some problem that might, or, or some minor issue that we might need to solve. And we I, just say, go, we'll solve it in co-op. Okay. So. It's, 
uh, here we in this document we define, we define some rules, some way to send the information, and in co-op we'll define a way to interpret this information and try to optimize it. Yes, I, I certainly don't want to delay the document for, okay. for something like that. But 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 since we have a solution on the table, which was just proposed by Kirsten, let's open the tickets. Because if, if we now know that, that there is a value zero for, for empty and then a value, everything is minus one and uh, one means zero, that's a perfect solution for the problem. We, we, we have time before the working blast call to just discuss that on the mailing list. And if it's better, then we ship it. If we don't find anything, but we know we can solve it in co-op, then we ship the document and we'll solve it in co-op. Okay. Okay, that's it, thanks. There are more questions? Thank you. Well, then again, congratulations for the work. Um, I've never seen such a tight schedule as we had this time. And having multiple implementation working in less, less than a year uh, and interworking, that's, that's just huge. <clears throat> okay, so I continue with a new, another document, which is SHIP for Co-op. So the first one is defining the basic rule, and we apply it to IPv6 and UDP. But for Co-op, as we have said in previous meeting, it's more complex because co-op is asymmetrical, you have variable thin length, you have a lot of things that are different from a statical things from UDP and IPv6. So what's new for first, I apologize, but for the document, nothing. So we, in fact, uh, the draft expire and uh, it's meant we have to issue a new value, but now a new version, but now we have things to do, especially with uh, variable fin length, so it will be done uh, done soon. So, why we have done nothing is because we move all the tools we need for co-op into the previous document, which gives a very good uh, way to do a lot of very flexible compression. So, for example, for, for co-op, we put the matching list, so it's a way to reduce uh, fields like code or type, you have, a, for example, for code, you have a lot of value, but maybe you will use your implementation, you will use only three or four. So this way you can reduce the size of code or uh, type by just sending an index. And this way you, you can reduce what you are sending. We have also the uh, asymmetry. So we have the direction that we put in the main document. It can be useful in IPv6 for the up limit. But here is very useful also because, for example, in one way you will send a post, and the other way you will, you will receive an uh, error message or an acknowledgement. And this way, if we separate both of them, we can have a better compression of the information. So we put, and we can also compress co-op message by reducing the size of some fixed uh, length size, like uh, uh, message ID or token, and we can use MSB and LSB uh, option to uh, action to do that. So now we we have something that works quite well. We begin to understand more and more how we can do very optimal uh, compression of co-op. So yesterday, for example, we can co compress co-op in two bytes. So that was something very, very good. So the things we have to do now is to describe very well these very powerful things that can lead to a negative compression. It means that zero, something that doesn't exist leads to four bits sent on the wire, but can be more flexibility in rule selection. So we have to describe this uh, in, in details to, to see how, uh, to understand how it works. So what do we have to, to do next? So we, maybe we will have to discuss with core people about how we can adapt co-op to LP1 environment. Because, for example, we can have sensors that will send information every day or every hour. And since now we are putting IP, a server cannot make the distinction between a, a sensor that send every day and another one that send every minute. So we will have problem with timeout. And especially in the server, we keep a list of the message ID not to, to process twice the same value. But if this list is maintained as it's saying in the standard five minutes, and we are sending every hour, so if we do a retransmission, then of course it will be lost, and we will process again the message. So we have to tell the server 
this sensor has a periodicity of one hour, this sensor has a periodicity of one day, etc. And if we want a generic server, maybe a good way to do that is to have an option that gives the time square of what we are sending. And this will have an impact also in the compression, because if we know all these things, we can dimension the message ID field and have something that will be optimal on the radio. So that's some, for example, things we will have to do to adapt co-op for LP1. Okay, so that's... Fantastic. And yeah. since we have, we have uh, experience and, and uh, basically message terms, uh, would it make sense to put uh, examples or, or recommendations in Annex to help? Because first thing is people will read this document and they wonder, uh, you always find that, right? Uh, how much can you compress with this thing? And I have every uh, six and document have a paper I've read says, oh, six and compresses two, and they give some numbers and, and they don't know where they find those numbers, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it would be great that if you have some, some examples that you feel are kind of really representative, like temperature and pressure in this room, if you could show the exchange, the, the compression, the rules that you use for that particular case, it's important because you may actually find that several rules, several way of writing your rules may work. There is not a single way of writing them, but there might be recommendations about how to write them well. And there might be examples of uh, work done well. Okay, in, in this document we have already example, but we can put more example. And we also study when we develop it the way Komai is using Coap, and so we can also uh, give some example about uh, about Comag. But we will have also to study other platforms that use Coap and see how we can uh, compress it. Actually, on this point, I would be. Um, I, I think that one of the things we should actually take make sure is that the system, the whole system, is working right. And this last point, for example, with the timers, this is something that seems pretty important to me, because otherwise, it's uh, you know we can have systems where, you know, it just doesn't work because of the time scale difference. So this is one point that seems very important, and uh, I'm not sure if you have other things that you have identified that need to be fixed because before we can or need to be addressed before we can say well it's it's ready to to be deployed and you know with the time we'll get more and more and more uh, feedback on what are the rules and how we know can, we can do this efficient compression yeah, so but do we have to do this on lp1 or in core that's the question because we cannot put everything on on this document because we will discover new needs for new option and if we add a new option it's not a problem on the chic mechanism because it's very flexible and we say, okay, now in the rule you have this option time square, for example, and it works. So it will not influence the, the compression. It's more the behavior of co-op server that has to be more generic, more uh, take more diversity of source of, uh, of clients. So that's, um, that's the question. Yes. So, so I think that here, what one of one of the points is, you, you're right. So, if we're defining a new co-op option, then we know where this work should be done. Uh, so, in uh, in core, then uh, the 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 question is, of course, uh, uh, Karsten, uh, how are you uh, feeling about this, and uh, are we going to? Uh, you know, how do, do we define here and we specify, okay, we want to have this option and then we move to core to actually do the work or, you know. Well, you are in luck. We have a working group meeting in one and a half hours. So, um, um, if you can maybe generate a little bit of slideware to, to motivate this, uh, we can discuss it right there, I think. Well, we have experienced this kind of problem before. So, in, in the constraint space, all the, the typical defaults for timers uh, do shift. So, for instance, we, we had to do something to DTLS uh, to make it work in the constraint space. So, this is not, not a new idea to anyone uh, in the room, and I, I can imagine putting this information into an option may be a good way to inform a peer that, that is not necessarily on the uh, very constrained uh, network to understand what, what the other peer is experiencing. <coughs> any any question for Laurent? And thank you, Laurent. Uh, thank you, Karsten. I mean, we really appreciate this interaction with Core.
So the next presentation will be uh, Diego on um, the ICMP compression. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Diego Duhovne, and we have developed this uh, draft with Thomas Lagos. Lagos is the editor of this draft, and there's also an implementation of this draft working which is open source, which uh, the link is on the last slide. So um, our idea is a new draft, this is a uh, new contribution, um, is to define a way to, to map IC and PV6 uh, uh, compression, of course, and uh, SCHC compression. And the thing is that we have be done some, some uh, extra work um, trying to reduce the number of of bits used, uh, just reusing the bits on the rule ID field, since we have some freedom to use it. Okay, so the the fields we are where uh, the packets we are uh, compressing are the echo request, the echo reply, root solicitation advertisement, and neighbor solicitation network advertisement. So the the the, the things we are missing still and that we are working on are redirect compression, redirect compression. And, the, and to analyze the rule performance. Um, yes, please. Now, just to say about the reuse, a lot of time, the reuse of uh, whole ID field, it's, you put a semantic on this field? Or yes, you have, you have added uh, inf uh, information on, even on the, on the, in the field, on the yeah. ID field. Because it's something, when we design uh, yeah. uh, chic, mm -hmm. we don't put any semantic, we yeah. don't even know the length of okay. the field. Okay. So it's very difficult to, to apply a semantic because it will be a chic of a foo that mm. tells you you use this size or this size, but mm. the generic document doesn't okay. precise anything. So I may, I may understand it's not allowed to do that. For my opinion, it's not a good idea. Okay, but um, since the, 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 there, was, uh, there was a phrase on, on the, 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 there was some freedom to, to reuse it. Okay, but okay, let's discuss it. Okay. Okay. So j just a question, a follow up on this. Uh, is it clearly stated somewhere that we should not have any semantic on the rule ID? I don't remember. <laughs> so I think I, and I, I agree with this, yeah. and I think we should yeah. we should add this. So because you know, with future documents, people, I think that it, there mm. will be this natural way of okay, well, what if we do this? It's like, no, this you should you can get something random here, and you should it should still work. Okay, but we have done it in the, this version. Okay, the the um there are seven bits we have saved because of this. Uh, anyway, uh, we can maybe you can uh, keep uh, a static value of the of the ID field, the rule ID field, and then uh, push all the, these bits to to, uh, mm -hmm. to the payload. It's okay. Actually, thank you very much for actually identifying this because yeah. I think it would have been uh, not a very good thing to move on with, you know, and then maybe a year later to to find out okay. that people are actually adding semantic. So that's actually a great thing. Okay. Thanks. So for the time being, we are going to explain what the semantic is, but maybe uh, after the definition of CHC, uh, then we, we change that, okay? So we, we separated and we just named all the bits, just that here, okay? And for each of the bits, we have given a, a number of values, okay? So uh, we separated, which is the next here field, okay, of the next field is the UDP, so if I, we have reserved for this, okay, 128 uh, uh, addresses. And then um, we need to define if the address is linked local or if it's global, okay, which you are using within the SMP field. And we have reserved one bit for, for the future use. Then um, the mapping continues with the type of message we are using there, okay? So we have mapped the, the ones we have already done, okay? And the redirect is not implemented yet, but it's, it has already a code. Then uh, if you uh, have another bit that sends if a single packet is sent, okay, or after the packet we have some extra information. We can, we can think about some, some link options and so on. So um, talking about the echo request and echo reply specifically, okay, then this was the, the generic header, okay? This, the, this one for the echo request and echo reply. Then we have only sending, okay, uh, 32 bits. Therefore, the identifier for sequence, uh, sequence, sorry, the checksum can be recalculated, okay, and the type and code we can be shared between the before between the, the two the nodes and the gateway. So, well, this over the the, the last one is cannot be seen, okay, is optionally the link layer option, which uh, is the only part we are sending. 
uh, for, for the road to solicitation type uh, packet there. And um, there are every other uh, part of the, of the packet is, is not sent. So we are just using uh, 48 bits, which is just uh, economic in terms of, of bits. Okay. For the term of uh, road advertisement, the other, the other packet, okay, we just, again, sending only the, all the link layer option. That's which is the indispensable, the, the, the thing is the fundamental to send here. Then on um, the neighbor solicitation, it becomes a little bit more complex because we uh, either, we, we need, like this indispensable, uh, again, to, to send it, the link local, okay, and the global, I, I either if, if you're using one or the other, because we are trying to, 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 uh, to understand who's around. And uh, if there's a uh, there's, there's the same prefix all around the nodes, okay, it, there will be a link local, okay, just a source of small value. But if they are not, okay, we have signed a, a full IP value, then it will be a global one. And then the ocean link layer is again 48 bits. For the neighbor advertisement, advertisement, sorry, the last packet, okay, then we have also uh, on, use only the target address, which is 64 and 128. That's the only either one or the other. Okay, and we have uh, ignored the, the option length or link layer there because you are just advertising ourselves that we exist in, within the network. And that's it. So the thing is the mapping is just mostly straightforward. Yes, Pascal. Pascal to be here. Um, so you, you've selected a number of messages and basically you've used all the possible bits. So it means like the yeah. format is stuck to, to the, the messages yeah. you've chosen. And rule of a thumb, I would have thought that the first message I would have encoded would not have been one of those three. I would have okay. encoded ICMP error probably to be able to report any form of error. Okay. And um, mm. since I mean, just me, okay. right? Okay. And so I'm just, I'm just concerned that that maybe the next step wouldn't should be probably that the mailing list discusses about mm -hmm. uh, what exactly, uh, which exactly ICMP messages we feel mm -hmm. uh, should be uh, protected by this uh, okay. mechanism, and I think error could be one. Okay. Good. Do you want a ticket for it? No, there's no ticket because there's not. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, last thing of the value implementation is, is published over there in GitHub. If you have any questions, yes, you can write to Tomas or to me, okay, or both, if you want. Thank you. So actually, this is a, a, a very, thank you very much for, for this work. And this is a, a very good question because uh, we are, it is not in our charter today. Uh, and uh, at some point we will need to, uh, to ask ourselves, is this, some, is this a work that uh, we are going to be interested in doing? Uh, so I know we'll be talking a little bit about this, but as well as while we are speaking about this, um, I would like to ask if you consider it to be a work which is interesting for us, and maybe Suresh, if you... Yeah, so uh, Suresh Krishnan, so if the current items are all done, we can have a re-chattering discussion, but I know you have some open points right now, um, but don't talk about adoption right now, like, but just, um, or like, like, uh, until we decide, like, you know, what are the things, kind of things you want to work on, like, you know, hold it down to then, like, so you have something on for today, so like, we can talk about it at, at that point. Okay, so kind of like to have a better view of like what are the things that are required and see how it fits in there. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, later, I will present uh, the discussion we have in the mailing list. Mm -hmm. So this point was very, very interesting for everybody. So, okay. mm -hmm. I yeah, I would have just asked if uh, people read the document and if there is an interest. No, uh, of course, we are way too early for this, right? Okay, and I guess Laurent will need you back on the microphone. Again, again, again. Okay, so that's um, something that is very old. So it's a very old document that uh, is when we started working on Chic, so we issue this document, but now uh, maybe it's time to, to think again to, to work on it. So when we, when we design the rules, we don't, in the document, we don't say any way to implement it. So we have one way is to use JSON, but it's not uh, very efficient. And another way will be to, to use uh, Young. And so this is an attempt to, to do that. 
So in the rule design, as Anna showed, we have different fields. So we have different rules. So it's a list of rules. And in each, each rule, we have a list of fields. And we have some value that will be well known. For example, if I find that, it's here. For example, of a field, we can uh, define some well-known value. Currently, in our implementation, is text. But it can be also uh, an identifier, a generic identifier that says this field is an IPv6 version field. This field is a co-op uh, URI path or something like this. So we have this. So for the position, it's a number. Direction is three possible value, bidirectional, upstream, downstream. Target value can be anything. It can be a number, a string, an array. So we, we have everything we will find in a packet. Matching operator, currently we have defined five of them. But of course, we can add other one. But these one are the one we think are the best now, right now to, to do the compression. And same thing for compression, decompression action. We have a list of action that we can apply for compressing or decompressing. So it means that it's. Mm, so as I say, we can use a JSON way to represent it. But here, for example, this is a rule we use uh, for the Akaton. It's about 2,500 bytes. So if we use some technology that sends only a 100 uh, message a, a day of 12 bytes, it will take two days to send uh, this work. So it's not uh, quite efficient in LP1 technologies. And of course, what we need also is to do partial updates or patch. It means that we may change, for example, a source port because a, a node will change its source port or change a flow label because a node wants speci to specify a flow label or all these things. So we need a way to signal it and not, a, of course, send everything on, on the radio. So that's why uh, Young could be a good candidate for first because we can have a compact and unique representation for some of the field of the of the rules. And also, we can have complex, <laughs> compact representation of uh, the exchange between the node, the, the device, and the compressor in the compressor the compressor in the infrastructure. So for example, as I say, we can have, for example, a network gateway or a compressor that will assign an IPv6 prefix to the device. So it's a kind of uh, neighbor discovery or a very small neighbor discovery and say, you have this prefix. So then checksum and all the things can be done on this value. And the device can assign or can tell the network, I am using this port number. I am using this destination address. A node may change the destination address for because you, may, you put an update on the node. So we need all these things. And what can be done also is to, to have something compact is that this rule can also be compressed using Shake. So we have something uh, kind of recursive. So we, we have to, to define that in, in Young. So in the first document, uh, we made a rule. So this is ab about the same rules, but it updates with the new, new version of, the, uh, of the, the rule as we announced. Shown. Before you go into the detail, uh, Mr. Please state your name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carsten. Hi. Um, so um, the, the the JSON you showed at the, the start is kind of the the truck. I mean, it, it's big and it doesn't fit through Italian streets um, and so on. And uh, the the uh, Yang Siba is. Uh, maybe the, the car or the Mercedes Smart. Um, but maybe what we actually need here is more like uh, Vespa. So um, I, I, I'm sure this can be made to work with Yang. I'm not sure uh, that uh, we, we don't have needs for keeping this stuff compact that go beyond what we would do with a standard uh, Yang solution. I'm really, I'm not sure. I, I, I need to find out okay. in more detail. Uh, but um, I think that uh, doing something uh, just uh, using uh, CoAP and, and CBO payloads, maybe even the, the uh, new CBO packed mechanism that, that uh, we talked about in the CBO uh, 
uh, working group and uh, maybe the the CBOR patch document that, that Peter and I have to finish at some, some point in time, that might be even more compact. So if compactness is, is, an, is a really important requirement here, uh, I would probably go into that direction. If, if general cultural compatibility with other management actions is our overriding concern, then we should go with, with the Yang Komi uh, yes. kind of solution. For, for two things, for Yang for me is a formalism that leads at the end to an implementation using CBOR and, uh, and, and yeah, both, both cases would so, use CBOR, but yeah. the, the, so the, the implementation by itself will not be that complex. What we have with Young is a formalism that helps us to design this. Yes, but if we use Yang, I think there is a certain uh, expectation that we would use the Yang CBOR. Or do you want to do a second CBOR encoding? Ah, oh, it's Yang CBOR. Yeah, yeah and, and what I'm trying to say is mm. uh, we can go way beyond uh, the, the level of uh, compactness ordered, uh, offered by that um, if we know exactly what we want to do. So Yang is kind of the, the general thing that, that works very well. And, and yes, you can transport a sofa in, in a Mercedes Smart if you have to. Um, but um, maybe we need a Vespa. So um, Alexander Perov. Uh, so yeah, this, this, these are like three points here that are really important. And this is why I think that Yang is the right tool to use. So the first thing is as uh, Laurent that you said there is that it actually provides the semantics that it actually says okay I mean Jason this is just uh, this is just a representation right but you still need to know what coop.code is and how you know that IPv6 that version what it is and right now you have it like in a text so Yang is the formalism it's the formal way that you describe okay there is a model so there are these fields and I expect here to at that, at that point to have to have this type of value and so forth then you have as Karsten said you have the Yang to Seabor mapping that actually allows you to map this thing to Seabor to something that is very very efficient right and then you have the protocol bindings that come to Komai so that you actually are using patch and fetch so this is already in Komai so uh, I think that uh, we're, we should also look into uh, the way this, these things will be implemented deployed and we don't want I mean this is like chair head off like this is really a personal opinion that we want to have uh, running code and we want to have interoperability and we want to have something very efficient uh, but you know in the same time we don't want to to spend too much time designing some new protocol or some new uh, thing that is made for this yeah. right. and another argument is that if we have different protocol it means that we put a value somewhere to say this is this protocol or this protocol so it takes place we have to send something on VR. The more we have something generic, the more we can compress all the information on, on the radio. Um, if I can react from just a, a higher standpoint, um, we want to get into a position where the, the quick and dirty is actually harder to do than the right way. And um, that boils down to having to, to enabling the reuse of all what the community has built, including, yes, Yang and, and, and all, all the tools which rely on Yang. Same thing for all the tools which rely on IP to uh, enable you to go from A to B, secure it, et cetera. We, the, even if it looks like, oh, it's so much complexity, actually, at the end of the day, for the developer, because all those tools are there, doing the right thing is a lot less expensive to develop and test if we use all those common IT tools. And that's really why we are doing all this, right? So this view of what Laura is proposing here goes in that exact same direction of enabling the clean way in an easy fashion for anybody so that they don't do the dark and dirty way. Any other comment? Thank you so much, Laura. Um, th what kind of relationship did you get with the young doctors? Uh, have you started working with them? I have not been killed by a young doctor right now, so. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we, I didn't show it. So, of course, we have to do a lot of work in, in young representation, and it's, it's a concept that is quite new for me. So we, we do an example. So I think there is one at the, at the end. 
but we have to to take advice and discuss more about uh, so and, and yacht is a good place for, for this. Fantastic. I'm confused that the, the value is still anything. Probably there is a tree of representations that the value is what it's supposed to be. But so. So, so no, okay, fantastic. Let us move, continue this work, please. And, and yes, there are a lot of helpful people at the ATF, at every ATF, which you could contact and work with. And with this, let's go to rechartering. And we have got some slides from Hannah about the discussions we've had so far. And then we'll have an open discussion. And we have about half an hour for the whole thing. Um, OK, I will, I will present for the discussion we have a little bit in the mailing list. Um, for these new items uh, to be working the working group. So the first one was the ICMP compression. Thanks to Diego to make the first version of draft. Uh, this uh, item has a lot of uh, input in the mailing list. There were more than 10 people that said that they were, they agreed to work in this um, ICMP compression. And then we have also the chic over specific LP1 technologies. I think it's very important. There were no input about these items. If there are volunteers to work on this, uh, the idea is to um, to see in the different technologies how we can define the um, um, the different variables of the chic compression. Uh, in order to work uh, the best in in the LP1 technologies. And then we have uh, uh, another item is the security for the LP1s uh, with the chic uh, implementation or compression. Then uh, there, there were no uh, input there, neither. And the other idea was the rules ID management. Um, the idea is, well, the rule ID is uh, an abstract number, but uh, do you want or is, is there any input about um, reserving some rules ID for in order to identify that this belongs to fragmentation, this belongs to format values, this belongs to ICMP, uh, this is more co-op, or, or we leave it as a general value and this will be specified in the compression of the specific protocol in order to identify that this rule is for this protocol, or, or it's better to define some numbers for some protocols. That was one of the questions. Yeah. So, uh, Chair Hadov, just a short question here about the rule ID management. Uh, could it be also specified in the uh, she cover foo document. So, for example, this technology yeah. specifies. Okay, well, for us, rule ID number one is fragmented packet, or rule ID two is ICMP. Blah blah blah. So, yes. it, is this also a possibility? Then? It's also okay. a possibility. If I can react to that, uh, I'd rather separate uh, the informational description of a particular technology, like the nice draft that we have today, with something which could become normative and could be very small, but which we say, oh, let's focus now on setting those parameters and, and let's make that a standard track RFC. So I would like to skip those two separate. Okay. And the last point uh, was the young data modeling for Chic, as Lauren presented once. Okay. So if, if you have more inputs or comments, or if you want to be volunteer to make one of these documents, uh, Shrigunda Valley. So there were a few proposals in the past, right? Like ready resource management and uh, gateway to the network server, standardizing the interfaces. So I did at least once or twice, you know, in the previous ITFs, I presented those proposals, right? Again, just to list one is ready resource management on the gateway, right? Defining the objects, right? If, irrespective of the protocol, but identifying the radio elements, right, information elements that need to be managed. That is one work item, right? That is uh, 
for from deployment point of view that is an extremely important uh, aspect right let's say if i'm deploying lora right or some other access network i should be able to get the ready resources understand them at least manage them that's one point second point is if you look at it currently there's no standardized interface between the between the gateway and the network server so if you change the network uh, access technology lora to sigfox pretty much they are the same issue fundamentally there's a sensor there's an access point or a gateway and then there's some aggregation function onboarding element right so this in between if you can standardize one interface and in which we can support multiple radio technologies i think that will be of immense use essentially you know industry will really greatly benefit from an interoperability point of view even within lora alliance is also not defining that standard right so this is a great opportunity for ietf to standardize that so those are my two you know proposals i would really love the technologies on the mailing list or what to react on your proposals in particular the latter one because uh, that that request i would like to see it coming uh, from from people who will actually uh, will deploy those things i mean do they see the, the same thing as you do i mean I, I really appreciate your your view and i would like to see if there are, to get more people joining in and say yes it's a good idea right right I, and uh, i'm not just saying this on the mic but i also to be fair i presented those proposals twice so oh, so this group knows now the f i would like to see the discussion on mailing list and people because we have the technologies are being represented in this group so i'd like to to have this discussion on the mailing list and and see see support for this idea uh, coming in to the help sure thanks uh, so, uh, Sri, uh, you pr uh, proposed it, right? So, like, do it again, right? At that time, the working group was not chartered to do it, so you need to start that process again to get this thing done. Um, but there's, like, two, thing two things I wanted to say. First thing is, like, we need to figure out, like, what form this is going to happen. So, is it going to be, like, a standard stack document or, like, informational stuff on what somebody else does, right? So, that's, like, the first decision we need to make if you want to go down this path. If there is interest, right, are we going to just document the stuff that other people do? Like for like the overview stuff, right? Like we decided we'll document like what other people are doing, like about other technologies. That's one thing. Second thing is like we had like a very good relationship with the other SDOs, right? Uh, like going and I want to keep it that way. So we don't want to be like stepping on the turf and doing things for them. Okay. So we need to have an understanding from the other SDOs uh, what their plans are. So would they like to come here to the ITF and do the work, or like do they want to do the things themselves, right? And that might lead to choosing, let's say, like X of the SDOs, like some subset says yes and some subset says no. That might lead to picking a different set of technologies than the overview for doing this work, right? So that's also something we need to consider. Because, like, for example, like Sigfox might decide, like, I've done this, right? And they might just decide to put it here or not, right? And, and stuff like that. So I, I want to be very careful on like how we do this relationship because like we're not like having formal liaisons or anything most of the case except I triple but uh, I, I want to be a bit careful here like uh, chartering work but I'm I'm willing to do it like if there's a community so like you know like she gets the ball rolling and then we figure out there's people to do then I'll make sure that the other SDOs understand that uh, we are interested in doing this work and then I'll go from there but I want these three kind of steps to happen before um we get in that area because there is that is very very technology specific stuff and as sri says there's like stuff that's in common but we need to figure out like you know if like we are walking into a party uninvited you know so yeah. thanks yeah thanks Suresh. only one comment is you know if you look back on the seller side the gtp is what you know we never managed to you know push you know mobile ipv6 because gtq gtp was deployed already in the 2g stuff right so here we don't want lp vans to go that route at least idf can do something here that's that's uh, i mean it's very important that you raise exactly what you said on the mailing list and i would love i will will ask for you know people to react from the various technology we we have several vectors to actually uh, uh show interest that well it's too late for the overview but there is a gap analysis in the overview and and then there are the individual documents and then there's the mailing list i mean there are multiple ways by which uh, the individual technologies can actually uh, support what you're saying or say no i don't know i mean we need to see right and, and now if we see a converging interest i mean that's that's exactly why we're here thanks So, 
thanks well, so yeah we, we're on we have more time for a chat right that, that um we had that private discussion about the need for an architecture document. We, we've seen already that um, the, the drawing, which basically gives names, because Sri was on the mic two seconds ago when he was talking about uh, gateway and network servers, and, and actually we are trying to spread the words that to, to be generic and not point at a particular technology, we kind of have a generic name like the, the radio gateway and the network gateway to name those things, and it's kind of obvious for everybody what in the technology blah, this becomes, and that's the overview actually helps you do that. Um, but at some point we talked about the need for an architecture document which would lay out how we see things and just wonder if people in this room think it's useful. Raise your hand if you think we need an architecture document. Uh, so, I mean, let, let's take this in a different way. No, no, no. I mean, let's 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 say this in 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 a different way. Uh, today we have. So I, I I would not address this like in, in the sense of okay, we have gateways, radio gates, and so forth. I mean, that has been done. We have already some things out there. It's mostly in the fact that we are bringing uh, uh, like we have the compressor, the compressor now, and you know, we have the compression, and uh, this thing is like uh, it lives somewhere out there. And it must be surrounded in, I mean, it, we must construct something around it so that it is actually viable. Part of this, uh, part of the things that we need to do is, for example, how we define the compression, how we, how we express the compression context. So during the hackathon, there was this JSON format that was, you know, like people around the table defined it so they, they were able to interoperate. Right. But right now we need to go to, uh, we need to define an extensible mechanism to actually doing this. So Yang is a one way to do it. There may be others, you know, there may be the use of Komai and, and, and so forth and so forth. But there is maybe this need to actually define how these two, how all these things, and there'll be new things coming, how they will orchestrate, how they will work together. Because like we're building this and maybe, I mean, I, I think that in order for systems to interoperate, we'll need at some point to have a, a document that describes, okay, a new device comes, sends this type of message, comes to the other, then, you know, the compressor gets the, the context from this and there and there and there. So all the things that we've been doing for the moment, like hard coded to, to move this to a really, uh, to a system that's actually working. <laughs> Much, much, much better expressed than, but that's exactly what. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you could say what I'm going to say yeah. next, that would yeah. be useful. So, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, because we had all these discussions before that, and, and I, I know that what we were talking about, so uh, I, I just didn't want to do it. So, uh, and, and it's like the whole system, how the whole system works. And I will ask the question, maybe, uh, Juan Carlos, do you want to say something before I ask the question, if there is interest of doing this work? Uh, we need, okay, so you, you need to say, okay, go, go ahead, Juan Carlos. Yeah, Juan, Juan Carlos Oniga, yes, I, I, I'd like to ask a question. So, so thanks, yes, I think that's a much better explanation. I wasn't sure if we were talking about network architecture, functional architecture, what that. Big picture, but, I was after a big picture, so we can position, if we are taking, we are talking about chartering here. So there needs to be a map and say, oh, we, are, we want to cover this piece in the map. And so, so having the, we, we started that at the, when we did the, um, uh, the, the buff work. We, we provide a, a very initial vision of what the big picture was. And, and we said, oh, we could be working here, we could be working here, we could be working, I don't know, uh, how to position the compression state in the place where the compression or the compression will happen because this thing must be agnostic to start with. It doesn't know which device will be placed in the network. So th there's a number of functions that we know will probably care for. And if we have this this map, then we could navigate it and say, let's charter this, let's charter this. And that's what I was after. So so then my question is, uh, I, I do, well, first of all, I, I do see value in this document because indeed it's it's always hard to explain to people, our development uh, the groups and so on, exactly how things work. So a document like that would be very useful. But uh, right now we are still talking about uh, Yang, Komai, ICMP and rules so fragmentation so how 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 do you foresee uh the timeline of this document uh, compared to the work or the where we are so is this something that will come after we have already agreed on on this yang uh, fragmentation and, and rule definition or is is it a moving target or is it a live document that we will freeze at the end once we are happy with what we've done or 
Uh, okay, so uh, personally, I think that um, we should have like it. It should go in somehow um, together, so that we have this. We we discuss and we say, okay, well, there is this first it, super important piece that we have now. That is the shake uh, compression mechanism, and now we m need to make it a living thing. So in order for it to live, we need this, this, and this, and then we need a document that actually says, okay, these two work or these things together they work. In this way, right? So I would go go with a pragmatic approach where we have like a, the description of how the things work, and maybe you know put some references to okay, this thing could live fun as a function in this uh, network element or this network element. But I would mostly focus on the protocol part of it. You know how 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 it how they all interact. So develop them in in like in parallel. So not publishing the document before we finish those discussions. Yes, um, so we, we had the similar question in 6 -ish. So if we can take inspiration from that, we, we wrote an architecture from almost day one, which, which gave a big picture of where we thought we were going the day we build everything. And obviously we, we had only half of the protocols or less than that, that were needed for this big picture, but we didn't know that if whether we would build the big picture all the way. And this has been effectively a moving target, and we have been all saying, oh, now we found a way to do this. It's going to be that protocol, for instance, the joint process that we are building. And, and some things will maybe never happen, but that gave us the map, the high level from, from some distance view of what we covered globally you know, and, and where we could be working and how those things interact with one another, etc. So, so people can can figure out. Oh, you're doing this building block, but that's that's where it will go in the world. Okay. So, while while you're still on the mic, actually, I would like to get back to the to this list of things that people cons that we discussed and that people say, okay, that that could be interesting to work. There are some interests. So you as uh, uh, as a Sigfox, as a technology provider, uh, which one of these elements seem important to you, and uh, you know things that we should be looking more for future work. I, well, the list is very comprehensive. I think we we have already discussed this. I see value in in, in most, if not all, of them. Uh, ICMP definitely. She cover a full sure security. Uh, I'm still uh, puzzled about uh, what exactly because here it says everything. Uh, Anna specified uh, security for Chic, and uh, so I think we need to 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 dig more into what exactly it is before I I could say yes or no. The rules ID. Uh, I'm open to discussing whether it falls into chic over four or it's an uh, independent. And the Yang, uh, for sure. I mean, we've been having this discussing discussions on uh, the Yang of things, and I think it's uh, extremely valuable to to open up. Uh, uh, plus, of course, this uh, architecture or high-level description or functional description, etc. Document. Okay, so, so we can. Count on you for a chic over Sigfox document. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone with some more on this list or, or some items that we have not discussed? Any further thought? Okay. We can. We. I mean, we'll continue on the mailing list certainly, and and so we, we'll probably start right on those items and try to. To get support, echo from uh, like Juan Carlos from uh, other technologies, and and then we'll 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 go and propose rechartering. Uh, um, I, I wanted to ask. Uh, so this is a question to our AD, Suresh. Uh, so how how do you see from from here? You know, given that we need to update some of the milestones, we are pretty uh, pretty much on on target with with a lot of them. But you know, we need maybe. Co op and, and these things, how, how do you feel we should address? So, I, I think, uh, sorry, Christian, so I think we should work on the list, like trying to mm -hmm. get this narrowed down before Singapore. So, and uh, if everything is done before Singapore, we can actually do like the rechartering discussions completely on list and be rechartered for Singapore. But I'm, I'm not sure, like looking at the uh, chic stuff, that we'll be done before Singapore, like shipping it out, okay? So, I'll, I'm glad to be surprised on that, but. Uh, the way I see it is like be ready, like get the chic stuff done, 
and ship it off. If there's any open issues, close them off in Singapore, spend most of the time for the rechatting discussion and get like, you know, let's say like Sri's comments, Juan Carlos comments, like, mm -hmm. you know, like iterate on them on the list. Like don't spend meeting time yeah. like yeah. for doing that. And if there's anything open, because I'm sure there's something going to come up that's going to be, we're probably going to hear from like the LoRa people, right? Like other IEEE folks. And yeah. I, I, I think there'll be work needed on the rechattering in the Singapore meeting. But I would like to get most of the work done before, right. like, you know, at least have a potential new charter, like what do you want to put it in? Yeah. And uh, like be ready for what, what comes up in the meeting. Okay, and uh, so like I know Pascal, we can pro you can probably talk to the IEEE people to just socialize it like mm -hmm. at the yeah, time. I don't know yeah. if like yeah, there Bob, some... Bob is hiding behind this thing. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I see his watch now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So 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 okay. um, so uh, that's something we can like you know get started off on and probably like uh, one Carlos for the same thing and maybe Alper or uh, Jeff for the uh, Laura. Exactly. I, I really wish to see. Uh, those technologies showing up on the mailing list so we can have a better understanding of what they care. Yeah. And I think the 3GPP piece was like kind of missing because like, you know, anti is like not like doing this uh, continuously, but I'll try to like dig up somebody like uh, from 3GPP yeah. as well to Thanks. take a look and comment because um, if you miss like one, like <laughs> they're going to do a different thing. So the our idea of like, you know, doing like common thing doesn't really happen if mm -hmm. we miss out like one of the major technologies we picked before. So, um, as as I said, like get started off on it as long as it doesn't draw away resources from people who are writing the documents and reviewing the documents. Um, if it doesn't take too many cycles, start it off now if you want. Okay. Okay. And, and on this, so if we've managed to ship the, I mean, when we ship the uh, IP UDP shake, and maybe we delay a little bit the co-op shake because we need to go with the co-op option and all these kind of discussions. Uh, is this? Uh, do you consider this as sufficient for you know? If in November we have the IP UDP shake and say okay, co-op, we know we have a milestone at the end of the year or something like sure. that. Sure, yeah. update the milestones, right? And I'll yeah. approve them. Like, like you guys have made like great progress, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I know it was aggressive timelines. I know you're a little bit late, but. I, I knew you would be a little bit late, right? Because um, I, the, the numbers are like crazy already when starting off, right? So I think it's uh, it's pretty good. Like you made great progress. So just go ahead. And I think uh, we can manage like, you know, one document pending from the previous charter. And we were chartered to do like one item. So like it ended up being like multiple kind of, but it's okay. Right? Like, but uh, we can have the discussion after. But I don't mind having the rechartering discussion now, like uh, before Singapore or at Singapore. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Sir. And with this, Bob, since I managed to grab your attention, I think you're going to be the next on the boiling plate. So, Bob, if you might. Um, so, so uh, I was lucky enough to be at the IEEE uh, last week and uh, attend the interest group LPWAR, which has met every day, and it was a really great. Uh, regret sessions that we had. And then there were also a number of discussions about 154K, and then there is the general activity on Wyson, etc. So there's a lot you can tell us about, Bob. Thank you. Okay, I've got some slides on 15.12. I'll give you a little verbal on LPWA and uh, the revision of 15.4, because we're endlessly doing revisions, sadly. <laughs> Well, maybe that's good news. Um, we had a number of goals in Berlin, um, opening report, of course, but the, uh, the important stuff was we had a, a large number of presentations, this particular go around, uh, including detailed discussions on PDD, P PDE, MMI, MPM, pass through, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of a general status update, um, we were looking at various format issues, you know, like where uh, should L2R IE be inserted, uh, and where should how should discovery be done with L2R, and, our, and uh, we, one of the major conclusions out that they are independent. We haven't arrived at uh, a full disposition on that, but they they don't have to be considered in combination, which I suppose is a good thing. And then uh, in terms of where should L2R management uh, be situated. Uh, we decided that that should be in the application layer uh, and in 802.15.12, uh, the management functional block. Um, so 
And then we uh, kind of looked over and, and tried to develop a list of, of generalized management functions. So as you can tell, in 15.12 right now, we're really trying to get it fully organized. Uh, and there's a, I didn't include the, the, the detailed um, functional diagram, but you can go find it on the IEEE document server. So in terms of data plane operation using 15.12, uh, we uh, kind of worked through an example based on 6-low. Um, I won't go through this in, in ad nauseum detail, but this sort of describes the, the flow through the system so we really could understand how the process worked and whether anything broke. And um, you know, that, you know, we think this is the, the general direction. So if anything spots any, anything haywire here, this would be a, this, or at least by September would be a good time to speak up. In terms of uh, the management plane operation, we did discuss enabling configurations from the higher layer protocols, uh, specifically NETCOP, COMI, and, uh, and uh, IOCT control and need for remote configuration. We discussed uh, how to identify profiles. Uh, so just uh, this was a, a lot of generic stuff. And then uh, an eye chart for those of you in the back of the room. Uh, we did have a number of accomplishments. I won't say we completed a lot of stuff, but we made a lot of progress on the, on the, ranging, uh, the, the ranging protocol modules, uh, the whole L2R piece, the management protocol, as I indicated, protocol discrimination entity, the multiplex max interface, and then discussions on general architectures for 8.15.12. And I think that's the end. Oh, the continuing efforts uh, are, as you might suspect, uh, along all these lines, and we've I, identified forces. You'll see two blanks there, but I'm assuming, Pascal, you're in a couple of key figures, as you were <laughs> in this last stuff for, for six low pan and six tish. Um, that has not been an issue, so it's just, uh, I don't know why Pat didn't put something in those blocks. And we're going to do a number of things in terms of looking at the functional block overview. Uh, just making sure that we understand everything about each of those blocks and how do they work, you know, what functions are they including, all the, all the stuff we've been doing uh, on all those other elements. Like I say, if you look at the diagram, there's a rather huge number of functional blocks. Verbally, now on LPWA, um, I think the, the biggest thing I really want to talk about there, just, you know, I think most of you are aware that uh, in 802.15 we've had an interest group, which translates to a BOF, and IETF. Uh, looking at LPWA sort of as a generalized thing uh, as it applies to 802, uh, seeing if there are other things within 802 that might be brought to bear on the problem of low power wide area. Uh, so it's been a very generalized study. It's not intended to replace anything. There's, um, it's looking for gaps. Um, and I think the most uh, interesting thing that came out of the Berlin meeting was uh, we looked at, uh, and I say we, I think uh, your, you know, did the majority of work on this, uh, various, uh, the suitability of various, uh, of various aspects. So uh, there were modulation schemes, uh, forward error correction schemes, connectivity, network topologies, MAC schemes, and encryption schemes. You did a really nice piece of work there um, that may be of interest, I think, um, to people here. And what I'll do, since it's an extensive amount of work and no way can it be covered in five minutes, um, it's very easy to go to the IEEE doc server, which is uh, Mentor. Um, and it happens to be document 17-451. So, um, and it has all the links in it and all that kind of good stuff. Can you please take it very slowly? So we'll make, I, I would like this number to be captured in the minutes. Okay, so document 17. 451. This is an 802.15 document, so I should actually precede it with 15-17-451. So you're in the right place on Mentor. And if you're not a member of Mentor, you just get an IEEE web account. You go on to Mentor. You sign in. I authorize it. You get the document. So uh, very easy to do. Uh, lastly, just to very quickly. Uh, uh, so, um, so, so, sorry, uh, just a question. Yeah, uh, is there any, uh, w uh, like, what, what is the license under which, uh, I mean, uh, it's available for everyone, right? Everyone. Yeah. Oh, oh. Can, we, can we Publicly just, available documents. Can, can we just put it on yeah, our when repository? You yep. we, can, when, you right. sub when you submit a document, you yeah. also, there's the front page of that says you forfeit any copyright 
oh. stuff and stuff like that. So it's oh. a thoroughly open public document. You have to have nobody's permission. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I like this kind of computer, right? right. No, no, but yeah. it's it's really good. So that that we can we can directly put it on in our in our document list. Yeah. So that that's yeah. Yeah. Well, and then lastly, um, we just finished fifteen point four two thousand fifteen, but we already have five completed amendments. We have a roll up, um, so we're putting those together as a roll up. But you know, fifteen point four has had growing pains, and there's a number of things that still need to be cleaned up. We're trying to be much more methodical on this go around. And you know, I know there are things that um, might be helpful uh, as far as six dish, six low. LPWA, and this would be the time. You know, we're not. This is not a. a, a fa we're not fast tracking this. We're really trying to assemble something that's that really um, corrects or, or adds uh, important things to 15.4. So this is this is just in the process of kicking off. So if you've got some stuff and you know somebody who's going, make sure you get those inputs in. Send emails to Pat Kinney. Uh, whatever. There's a number of mechanisms, and if you're curious about any of it, just send me an email at behighly at ieee dot org, and I'll be happy to make it a part of the process. So that's it. Um, can I find question, Bobby? If you don't mind. Sure. Um, so so far, fifteen twelve has considered six lupin because that was the only thing available, and now for the most extreme cases, this group is proposing check. And I was wondering if it would help the developer, and in which fashion, to, to have also Chic somewhere in this picture of 1512. Does it make sense, or is it really an alien world? Um, how, sh how should that be, or could that be integrated? And yeah, that, that should, you know, we, we, we assembled in a presentation um, and made part of, you know, just the material that goes into uh, the document. I said, if there's, a, if there's enough agreement on it, um, you know, this is not a. It doesn't take a, 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 you know, a lot of effort. But if there's enough agreement on it, then then that'll move forward and could be included in the graph and stuff like that. I, I can see that the application user now, you know, using fifteen twelve and and really fifteen twelve selecting how it's going to compress by and where and where it's going, and I see a lot of power in that. Sometimes the comp the the. Okay, the, the constraint is not really on the device. We can, we can have this code in there. The constraint is, is on the medium, so right. we have to choose the tool well. But but the application should not have to care too much as long as it has an edge of the bandwidth that it can use, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's also, by the way, we why we separated 12 and 4, um, you know, that, that just in terms of structure. Um, it lets us really add things in 4 that, that, that are consistent with what's already in the marketplace and you know, we don't so we don't break stuff and 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 then 12 um, you know becomes a, a way of really adding to it a lot of things that were deliberately left out of the Mac uh, to keep it lightweight okay so th then um, uh, a follow-up question on, on what on what you're saying and thank you very much that's really a great uh, great info piece of information uh, do you think that's right it could be possible to to write up a draft that is something like uh, I mean to, oh, for a contribution here yeah for contribution oh, yeah, here absolutely. to to have absolutely. something like a, a chic over uh, eight hundred two dot twelve and then that could be yeah. you know because this is basically the way it's saying okay guys yeah, if absolutely. you want to use it this is the the profile yeah that would be very good yeah oh, oh that we'll, that's we'll take that as an action okay that that sounds really good. Okay, and I yeah. just wanted to say hi to to Charlie. Thanks. Hi, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks. Next Thanks, time you see me, I won't have the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bob. And with this, we can call for any other business. We are straight on time, perfectly on target. We need to because we are very constrained. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, any other business? Anything you want to raise before we close the meeting? Then you just save five minutes of your life. Thank you so much for, for, for being here. Use it wisely. Yeah. Okay, and uh, if, if somebody did not sign the blue sheet, now is still time to do it? Blue sheets, blue sheets, blue sheets.